WMEN Royal Palm Beach. Welcome back to the Sid Rosenberg Show. When it comes to foreign policy, there is nobody of the 17 candidates better than Lindsey Graham. Mr. Trump's solution to destroy ISIL is for us to go to take oil from Iraq and Syria and pay our wounded warriors with it. That is the most absurd way in the world to destroy ISIL. What do you believe? What, what is your way the best to destroy ISIL? Uh, you got to have a ground zone that you can't do it from the air, Sid, and we don't have the right configuration on the ground in, in, in Iraq. Obama has 3,500 troops. I would add 10,000. Nobody seems to understand what you got to do to destroy ISIL. Because they're scared, Lindsay, because, look, nothing... They're scared. Not, they're right. scared to tell people something right. they don't want to hear. Right, and you need my approval. See, I agree with well, you. Well, don't vote for me. Don't vote for me if you don't want somebody to destroy <laughs> ISIL. You know, I intend to destroy these bastards. It's Sid Rosenberg on 640 Sports. Lindsey Graham of South Carolina. I wasn't the best law student, by the end of this debate, it would be the most time I've ever spent in any library. Here's my problem, Secretary Clinton. I've got a real good chance of beating her because I don't say things bad about her all the time just when she deserves it. And here's the one thing I want to tell you Thank today. you, Senator. Wait, wait a minute. Were you the wedding cake baker or the gay couple or the Baptist preacher? Radical Islam would kill you all if they could. Senator, Let's don't lose you. sight of the big picture here. But that's the first thing I'm going to do as president. We're going to drink more. <laughs> Our leading candidate gets his foreign policy from watching television. And what I heard last night is the Cartoon Network. Ooh, I'm big, I'm strong, we're gonna hit him in the head. That's not foreign policy. That's a cartoon character. Let's create a rational, legal immigration system because we have a declining workforce. Thank you, sir. Tom Thurman had four kids after he's 67. If you're not willing to do that, we better come up with a new legal immigration system. Thank you, Senator. Some classic Billy Idol right here. My beautiful wife, Danielle, will celebrate her birthday next week, two weeks. And uh, she's a big Billy Idol fan. In fact, we're going to go see Billy Idol. Thank you, Henry Pisano at the Hard Rock Hotel. Coming up on Monday night, Billy Idol. That was Lindsey Graham. Lindsey uh, was the clear-cut, far-and-away winner of that first debate. He blew away Santorum, Jindal, and Pataki. And he, uh, in my estimation, he was a top three, four finisher all night, including the big debate later on. Uh, my next guest, of course, you, you guys know I love him. He's my first cousin. I'm uh, really proud of him and his son, Jake, by the way. He was a senator from the state of Minnesota, eight years as the mayor of St. Paul, Minnesota, and one of the smartest guys I know. Live from Minnesota, my cousin Norm Coleman. Norman, good morning, pal. Uh, great, to, great to hear you. And, and uh, yeah, my and Lindsay's my guy. As you know, just uh, full disclaimer, full disclosure. <laughs> but, but, he, but he had a big night last night. Uh, he, uh, and he's, he was the guy with a plan to, to, to destroy ISIL, a clear plan. Had, you know, said we're going to put troops on the ground. This is the way you're going to win it. Uh, he had a sense of humor. And uh, you know, you, I heard some of the clips you played, and uh, but he he was strong. You know, he as he's quote Lindsey Graham, he's going to kill those ISIL bastards, and 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 you need someone with the, with the uh, the ability, the 35 years of military service, uh, to know what it takes to do it and have the courage to say it, because as as he said to you, not everyone wants to hear the truth, and the truth is that that they're going to kill us uh, unless we kill them, and to kill them is going to take American commitment, not by ourselves. But, but it's going to have to be a strong American commitment. You just can't do it from, from the air war. And you can't do it, by the way, if, you, if you're getting your military advisors from, from advice from TV. Right. I think the, uh, the shot at Trump, <laughs> the cartoon character. Lindsay won the, won the undercard last yeah. night, yeah. and uh, hopefully give him a chance to, uh, uh, in the next debate, uh, to be in the main stage. Or like Santorum said, he's also lost, by the way, Rick. Nice guy out of Pennsylvania, but just use the Arab boots. He's not. So I will tell you this, Norm. I thought there were two guys last night, based upon their performance in the first debate and where they are in the polls, that uh, saved themselves to the point where not only are, are they alive, but maybe alive and well. And those two guys are Lindsay and Chris Christie. Your thoughts on that? I thought Christie had I, I, I was listening to you, and it's not because we're related, okay? It's not we're mirroring each other here. Uh, but I thought Chris Christie had a very big night. I, th- I thought he was good. Uh, he, he's he's strong. He's he has, I think, the best political 
instincts of anybody on that stage. I think Marco Rubio is the most charismatic. And Rubio had, in, in his own way, Rubio, Rubio is still, he's, he's, in that, he's, in, he's in the place that he wants to be. He's not only head of the pack. But he, every time he speaks, said he, you know, I, I put little checks next to, you know, good, good, you know, good comments, and, and every time Rubio spoke, you know, I gave him a little check. So he, he was, but, but Chris Christie was strong. He was strong, and, and uh, you know, had a presence there. And, and so, and, and his retort, you know, about his his understanding. We talk about terrorism, you know, his reflection on 9/11 and his wife and the personal nature of it. And saying to, to, to Dr. Carson, who's a good guy, uh, but but I, I think. Uh, I think we saw last night. It's 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 just not enough about being a good guy. Mm. You, know, you can't defeat terrorism, okay? With uh, you know uh, being a good guy, you got to be tough. You got to be firm. Uh, and, and you know, compared to the Donald, uh, who had nothing substantive nothing. to say, nothing, nothing substantive no. to say. No. You know, Christie had something substantive to say. Ruby had something to substantive to say. So, uh, listen, Carly Fiorina. We haven't talked about the guy, but but she had a a, a fabulous night. Uh, she's uh, she she's going to be a force in this. I, I think as the, the uh, summer of love uh, with, with Trump and, and Carson, the outsider fades, I think you'll see Fiorina kind of rise up. She's going to be the outsider in there. And then you've got Christie and, and Rubio. Uh, I think they're still in this, and, and, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of track left in this race. Norm Coleman in Minnesota. I agree with everything you said. I want to get to Trump, more on Trump, uh, Trump a little bit. But going back to Lindsey Graham for a second, obviously he's very strong on foreign policy. I, and I said it to him, and I'll say it to you. He's the strongest of all 15 folks in this. Uh, there was some concern, though, as to how he did with the rest of the issues. Uh, people are saying, well, he kept interjecting himself about ISIL, and that's great. We want to destroy ISIL. How do you think Lindsey Graham did with the rest of the issues on that stage last night? Well, I think it was the political realist in this. You know, Bobby Jindal was reflecting and mirroring the frustration that everybody has. The Republican Congress didn't you know, get rid of Obamacare, didn't do this, didn't do that. Uh, and Lindsey Graham says, hey, you need, you, need 60, you need 60, by the way. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then even if you were to use what they call the nuclear options, we'll change it to 51. Obama vetoes that you need 67. It's not the way it works. So, so don't be promising people things you can't deliver. So I thought he, I thought he was the political realist. Uh, in 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 uh, and so and across the board on a range of issues. I think I listen. I think is is immigration, which uh, not everyone is going to agree with. But Lindsey Graham is, is out, and he said, and he said it with humor. You know, he, he talked about the uh, you know there may have been 20 workers for you know every every senior when Social Security was started, and they're going to be about two for every one of us right. when our baby right. boomers retire. You know, we need more workers. Immigration is going to be part of the answer. And then he ended it with that that Strom Thurmond quip. quip you know, and he had four kids after he was 60. Seven, unless you're prepared to do that, we better have a better plan for immigration. So uh, I, I think uh, on a number of issues, he had that kind of political realism. Uh, I, I think he was strong, but clearly he's out there saying, folks, this is the issue of our time. And I, I think that's going to earn him a, a place, a, a longer-term place in this debate. Is he catapulting to number one? No. But, but is there a reason for Lindsey Graham to be part of this conversation yeah. Yeah. to help shape it? I think he demonstrated that last night. I agree with you. Now, one more on Lindsey, then we'll move to Donald Trump. Look, uh, we both admitted to each other, and to Lindsey, not very good in the first debate. Now, he said he was very uncomfortable with no crowd. He made a joke early on last night. Nice to see people inside the audience. Uh, was, <laughs> was, was it as simple as that, that he was so much better this time around, or, or was it that he knew, he knew where he is in the standings, he had to come out with a big game last night to remain alive? I think it's I think it's I think it's the latter, by the way, uh, and and that is I think that's that's character, Sid. Okay, that shows character. You know, I I, I you, you like folks. Winners are folks when the chips are down. Okay, when they got to perform, they perform. Okay, that's that's who you that's who you want in the White House. That's who you want as as a leader. And and I think you saw that with Lindsey. He had to perform last night. He had to be. He had to by the way perform. He had to be Lindsey. I mean, what, that's what you didn't see in the first debate. Those of us who know him. Uh, you know, this is a guy who, who's got a sense of humor, who can be self-depreciating. He had a comment about he's probably spent, well, spent more time in the library in that debate than he did in his entire school career. But that's who he is. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes I worry that he's a little too, you know, a little, little too quick with with the quip. But that's who he is. He's self depreciate has a sense of humor. Uh, he's got, a, you know, you know talk about the issues. He talks about Social Security, uh, and he reflects on his own upbringing. Listen, this guy started with, he had nothing. His family had nothing. So don't be lecturing him about, about mm. Social Security. Don't be lecturing him, talking to him about the Washington elite. Okay, that's not who he is. And so I think what you saw last night was who he is. And I think you saw who he is because he did just what you said. 
which he rose to the occasion, which I think winners do. Donald Trump, now you and I had a nice back and forth about a month and a half ago on Donald. Uh, listen, one thing you and I can argue is his success, his poll numbers, and, and even last night where I thought he was lousy, his poll numbers this morning for some strange reason are good again. He, here's, my, here's my opinion, okay? Uh, people like him uh, because he's not a politician, because he's brash and arrogant. I thought he was bad in the first debate. I thought he was worse last night. He looked anything but presidential. He was red-faced. He had to go right back to the insults and those types of things because when it came down to any substance, he had none. He embarrassed himself with uh, Iran, with Russia, with Syria. He had nothing. Uh, at the end of the night, I thought Donald Trump may have had the worst night on stage than anybody despite his poll numbers this morning. Your thoughts? I, I, I Listen, I, I, I'm stuttering here because the, the Trump thing, I just can't. I, I listened to you know, a little bit of your show with uh, the, you know, your, your you know, radio colleague there who yeah. you know, think that Trump was a winner. Oh. He had nothing to say. He had nothing to, and, and the, the personal quips, I just don't know how they sell. You can't insult your way into the White House. You can't insult your way into solving world problems. You know, the Rand Paul comment about your face, the, the, the condescending, and I'm sorry, forget about politically correct. You know, so when, when Carly Arena kind of strips the bark off him with, with just a few words, you know, the, the, the women of this country heard what you that said. That was great. That was great. He kept, comes back with, with, with you're beautiful. Right. you got a beautiful face. Right. You know, well, it, by, the, by the way, he, he did that twice last night. He called Carly Fiorina beautiful after he did, he did not do that the first time. And then when Jeb Bush said, hey, apologize to my wife, he went the same route. He's got, even his comebacks last night were lousy. Well, it's, and, and the little shot at Rand, the Rand Paul, you right, know, that you look right, ugly. Right. I mean, so, so there's, you, can't, you can't insult your way into You can't solve world problems by insult. And the, the fact that kind of the, the, so many people still don't see that, uh, to me, is absolutely mind-boggling. I, I don't have an explanation. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. In this business, you're supposed to kind of feel the have the pulse of the people. Yeah. I always thought that you know when I was running for office, I had that. I kind of, I, you know, I got a sense of it. They were angry. I understood it, and they had to respond to that. Uh, but the Trump thing, I, to, to me, again, I, I, I think the steam is going to be let out of this thing slowly. It's not going to burst. It's not going to be a single thing he says at the strip. But I think, you, you, as I said, you're going to start seeing that bubble deflate. You know, Carson uh, is, a, is a wonderful man, but I just don't think that steam's going to be kind of powering that engine. And you see Carly kind of rise as that third-party outsider. Uh, I, I think Democrats got to be scared of her. They got to be the Clinton people have to be scared of her. Uh, she was really good last night. But then, you know, folks like Christie is still in the game, and Rubio is still in the game. I don't think uh, Kasich. Who was, a, who was a smart guy and a good guy. I don't think he had the best night. I think he was one who kind of yeah. fed off the energy of the Ohioans in that last debate. Yeah. And just and in this one seemed a little lost. Scott Walker was good in the moments that he had, but there just weren't enough of them. But he was good in the moments that he had. And, and so I, I think this is one of those races mm -hmm. where, where they're still kind of settling in position. That we're not even at the head of the backstretch yet. We've yeah. got a long way to go. You got, yeah, you uh, and, and, you're right. Uh, we have a long way to go. Not even yeah. close to the backstretch. You mentioned Scott Walker, who, by the way, is very, very jealous of your state, neighboring uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin. <laughs> um, but uh, let me get to Jeb Bush. I thought Jeb, the first hour or two, didn't do a heck of a lot. But I really thought over the last 60 to 90 minutes, minutes that he was really good i mean I, I, and i'll say this as good as anybody up on stage so good in fact that when the night was over i did have jeb bush placing in the money despite again the very slow start uh, he went right at trump a couple of times your thoughts on jeb bush and, and I, I i don't want to be kind of mirroring you here against it but i gotta say in the beginning i was worried uh for jeb i, I like jeb i think he's a good guy and, and i think he's very capable very good i think he'd make a great president and Again, I got a lot of friends there, not endorsing Jeb Bush, but I think he's I think he's he's a very capable man. Uh, and that early part of the debate, I just thought even going with with Trump, I, I just didn't think he was getting anywhere. And then they took a shot at his brother, okay? and then he and then he came back and said, you know, what? he made us safe. And I got to tell you, that was a galvanizing yes. moment in the debate. Yes. Okay, yes. that pulled everybody together. Yep. That pulled everybody yep. together. Trump had nothing to say, but everybody else that that it, and and I got to tell you, for the Republicans, the audience. You know, uh, we reflect he did keep us safe for his failings and for whatever, whatever went wrong in that presidency. And, uh, you know, it, the, the fact is that he kept America safe and he had that strength. And, and that was a galvanizing moment. Uh, and then when he, like, I think, you know, pushed Trump to apologize to his wife, personal. So the personal stuff with Jeff, it's interesting for a guy who's not seen as very emotional, who's seen as kind of a wonkish, 
You know, he's a smart guy. He was a great governor, good record. Uh, but but it was a personal stuff, I thought, that kind of defined him last night. And that allowed him, got him, I think it, it kind of got him in a rhythm where he could then talk about his policy stuff, where he was just much more relaxed and yep. much more at ease. So, so I think he ended, I, I put him in the money. I, I, he didn't hurt himself last night. I think he had a better performance than he did in the first debate. It wasn't over the top. It wasn't over the top, but it's, it's good enough to, to live to fight another day. And with the resources that he has, uh, he's pretty strong when it comes to fighting. Totally agree. He's got a lot of money, over 100, well over $100 million. I will ask you this then, uh, talking just about the, the, the issues. Forget about Trump for a second. He was awful. Uh, just about the issues last night, whether you want to talk about Planned Parenthood, you want to talk about foreign policy, you want to talk about the economy, medical marijuana, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, when, the, uh, when, the, when we got to the issues last night, Norm, anybody really stand out for you on any specific issue? Well, and certainly in the undercard, we talked about right, Lindsay, Lindsay. You know, yeah. standing out uh, on, on the, the national security issue. There's no, no question about that. And I thought, again, Rubio and Christie uh, on, on those were, 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 were pretty strong. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Planned Parenthood, I, 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 you know, Lindsay, by the way, did the funding and political realism. Like I, he, he, if he would have been the first, I'm with you, I think he would have placed up in the top, you know, three or four in, in all the debates up there. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if, if there was, if there was, you know, Rubio is just good. Every answer that he gives is is good on on, on the issues, and you know, it, it was an issue. But you know, the re, the response about speaking Spanish, that little thing with, with which touches upon immigration, which touches upon immigration. I think Rubio's response was was fabulous. It, it was yeah. so rich. It, you know, my dad. I, I spoke to my dad. He spoke in Spanish. He's a good conservative, a good Republican. I wanted to hear it from my voice, not from some Univision, you know, some reporter from Univision. Mm-hmm. I, I thought Rubio on immigration, where he's had some issues, uh, was, was fairly strong. But it's interesting, Sid, the big moments of that debate were, were not necessarily the, uh, the, 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 the substantive issues. I do think Carly Fiorina. Carly Fiorina on the Planned Parenthood issue just just hit it through the roof. Yeah. Well, uh, well and, and, any any time you could take a, a, an issue like that and make it personal, like she did with her stepdaughter, that's going to ring more true than anybody else just kind of espousing their theories. Well, and that was yeah, yeah. That's and that on the drug addiction on the issue, right. which you know. Right. Uh, oh, excuse you know, me, drugs, losing, right? Not, not Planned right. Parenthood, right? Right. right. But right. she Planned Parenthood. She talked about it about a, a, that feed that that baby laying on the table with a beating heart. Yes. And we talked about on a table with a beating heart, right. and then you're talking about dissecting it and preserving its brain. It was graphic, Sid. Okay, it was graphic, but it, but it was moving, and she, she has an ability to do that without going over the top, without being loud. Uh, she very, very. I, you know, I was told that she wasn't a great debater when she ran against Barbara Boxer for the U.S. Senate. Uh, but but and she's whatever 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 vitamin she's been taking. I, yeah. I, I don't know, but she's. Uh, she's a a wonderful debater. Tone, uh, you know, people comparing her to Margaret Thatcher. That's a big leap. That's that's, that's you know that's 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 Margaret is kind of the icon out there, for, you know, for women leaders. Uh, but but Carly is certainly you know people are, are, are kind of you know saying that, uh, and I think for good reason. She was very very good. So yeah, the the, the Planned Parenthood, the, the graphicness, the on the mm-hmm. uh, drug use issue, the personalization. Yeah. Uh, I thought she was very very strong. So what happens now tomorrow at your run, Norm, with, with Lindsay uh, again? Uh, a very good performance. Last night, everybody, the numbers, uh, everybody agrees. He really wiped out the rest of the crew in that first debate. What happens now? Well, what, does, what does he do next to ride this momentum? Well, I, I think some folks fade out. At, at, you know, they, they can, you can still hang in there because it, it may not cost much to hang in. Uh, you know, but, but the rest of the undercard, I don't, they, there's nowhere to go. Uh, I don't think Huckabee, I mean, he's got his kind of piece there, but there's not much happening with, 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 with Mike. It's interesting, Ted Cruz did not have, who's a, a fabulous debater, didn't have the, great, the, the greatest debate. I mean, he's, he's strong when he speaks, but, uh, you know, Cruz didn't, didn't really do much to help himself last night. But I think for a guy like Lindsey, what it is is, is that he's, uh, he, he's earned a place in, in the discussion and, and that it's a voice that needs to be heard. Uh, and, and so he's, you know, he, he lives to fight another day. I think the folks who have been supporting Lindsey Graham, because they want to hear his voice, they want, they want to, to, to press people on what it really takes to win the war of terror, to, to defeat ISIL, I think he'll have an opportunity to keep doing that. Is, is he jumping to the head of the pack? No. Uh, is, is he a long, 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 long shot to be president mm. of the United States? Yes. Mm. Uh, but is he going to be part of this conversation as others drop down and he stays in? I think you'll still see him. I think you'll still see him in this race, and, and, and I think uh, a broader public will want to see him. Uh, he was one one of the most uh, Googled folks last night. Yes. If you look at kind of who they were looking for, wanted to find out about, because he had been, they hadn't heard him. Uh, he hadn't uh, kind of put himself forward. He hadn't raised himself up. And so 
he's got an opportunity to live to fight another day. That's what this is about. You live to fight another day. Uh, a couple folks, as a result of last night, as time, they're, they're getting close to not living to fight another day, but I think Lindsey does. Who are those guys? Who do you think? Are, give, give me two or three names right now that you think are going to be done in a very short amount of time. Well, certainly the rest of the undercard. I, I, you know, they, they, they make uh, Pataki, uh, they have the rest of the undercard. Uh, Rick Santorum and, and, and Bobby Jindal. I just, I don't, they're not going anywhere. And I, and I say that with, right, like Bobby Jindal's a friend, respect, I know all those guys, they're all good guys, but they're not going anywhere. And Rand Paul will stay in this, and because and, uh, Rand has his, he has his, his piece of this thing, but uh, I'm not sure it's, it's, he's not jumping to the head of the, head of the pack. Uh, I'm not sure what, uh, you know, with, with Huckabee at, at this point. I mean, it's, listen, these folks can stay in this walk because it doesn't make much to stay in. Mm. But I think you're starting to see a filtering out of those who are rising and those who aren't going anywhere. It's maybe put it that way. Uh, there are a couple of folks I'm not seeing going anywhere, uh, and there are a couple of folks who are really moving forward with some speed, the arena simply being one. I do think Donald Trump and, and Ben Carson are going to be settling down. Yeah. I yeah. think they're going to be settling down, and in the end, you know, we'll see how many more months, but, but I'm going to tell you, Sid, they're, they're not going to be there at the end. And I say that with respect for Carson, who's a good man, and I say that as a, as a, as a, a fair observation of Trump, who's gotten has nothing to say, hasn't said it, and what he does say, I don't think it resonates. It, it may resonate well with, with, with a lot of folks, with a, a number of folks, but in terms of, of being a problem solver and being kind of realistically addressing the problems that this nation faces, I'm not seeing that coming out of his lips. So, so I, I think the summer of love, uh, for Donald Trump, uh, it's we're into, we're into, it's a little late in the season, uh, but I think it's slowly, the air is slowly being yeah. let out of that balloon. Yeah, yeah, listen, I don't disagree. I thought it was awful last night. So one more all-encompassing question uh, on the whole group. I thought Ted Cruz was actually really good last night for a while. I love this answer on John Roberts. I, uh, he kind of faded, though, late. They didn't go back to Ted Cruz on much, but I'm not a huge Ted Cruz fan, but I did think he was pretty good last night. But on the way out, Norm, what was your impression uh, of the of the whole crew? 15 people, 14 men, one woman. We know what the liberals say. It's a clown show. I asked Peter King the same thing. And I would tell the liberals that, hey, when Hillary and Lincoln Chafee and O'Malley and these folks step onto the stage, uh, if this is a clown show, what are you going to call that? So with that yeah, you, said, look, you look at the target level. You look at the, you, you look at the talent level on that stage. Yeah. Okay? And it was a long night. And it was a tough night. And it, it just kind of just you know, sucked all the energy out of you. But the talent level on that stage was pretty fabulous. It was pre- it was pretty pretty awesome. So that's as a Republican, you got to feel real good. You got to just feel yeah. real good about what you saw at, at both. By the way, both those debates. And you put that talent up against what they got. We're you know with, with Hillary, with Lincoln, Chafee, with Bernie Sanders and O'Malley. Uh, Republicans had to feel pretty good again last night as to as to the level that we. I mean, you took, the range of these folks we talked about. Uh, that was that was pretty extraordinary. So I feel real good, for, you know, for my party. For the future of the party, with the talent that was on that on that uh, well, the podiums last night. And by the way, I have to say, did you have have you had Josh Rogan on? You got Josh Rogan he's, on your he's, show. He's coming on at okay. nine o'clock. I love him. This guy, he he is he is top notch. He's the guy that 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 uh, that uh, revealed the, the Parchin, the Iranian military yes. base, with with the deal that that the. Uh, you know the Iranians are going to they're going to be inspecting and the and, and the uh, IAEA is going to be kind of waiting outside the gates you know and then, <laughs> right. having them collect the samples uh, he's the guy that that, that unveiled all that he's a top notch reporter so I, I kind of know that you had him on the show uh, give him my best I've, I've always been a fan of, of his writings uh, well he's on often actually he's one of my favorite guys on the way out uh, Norm the apple has not fallen far from the tree you've had yeah. it and a great political career we're all very very proud of you I love you very much and now your son Jake who is a great kid a great kid a smart kid he is uh, also entering the world of politics but what exactly is he looking to do so he's running my Jake is going to run for state senate uh, wow. United States States not United States the Minnesota State Senate in in Minnesota and in, in Car it's, it's Carver County uh Chan Hassan area I got to tell you Sid I have a sense of a great sense of pride uh, and this is when I say Fred, I, a cavelling, okay, I feel like real good that he's made the decision to, to enter the arena. And, but I also say that understanding that it's an arena in which you often get stuck in a knife fight. Uh, I, I haven't, uh, you know, pushed my kids or encouraged them to, to do this because it's a tough, it really is a tough business. If your listeners out there, you put yourself out there. Uh, you know, there are folks that just want to kill you simply because they may want to kill him because they don't like me, Sid. <laughs> there are enough folks that, you know, that right. think that I wasn't true enough to the, you know, to the cause right. that they'll take it out of my son. Uh, and so you're entering an arena in which there are folks with knives. They do want to kill you. On the other hand, the fact that he's willing to put himself in the arena 
You know, it's, it's the Winston Churchill line. It's not the, it's, excuse me, Teddy Roosevelt line. It's not the critic who counts, but the person in the arena. The man is faced with, you know, his face is, you know, covered with dust and sweat and blood. Or, you know, mm-hmm. knows the great enthusiasm, the great devotions. In the end, uh, it, it's, it's, it, you know, this is the person who uh, is willing to kind of fight for what he believes in. And so I give him great credit for that. I really do. But with a little sense as a, as a dad. A little sense of trepidation, a little sense of concern, sure, sure. because it's not an easy, it's it's not a, 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 an easy business, and, and so I'm proud he wants to serve. I'm proud he's willing to put himself in the arena, as I say, uh, at, at, at just the end of that uh, the uh, the Roosevelt line, uh, and in in the uh, what is it? Uh, in in the end, knows the great enthusiasm, the great devotion, but whose place shall never be among those cold and timid souls that know mm. neither victory nor defeat. Yes. Okay. Uh, he's he's put himself in the arena. Yeah. He's willing to do that, uh, and I'm certainly going to do everything I can to, to, to help him. Uh, but I, as a dad, uh, I have to tell you, uh, it is something that you, know, you wonder, is this the choice you want to make? There are, there are a lot of easier ways to, to make a living right. in this country today uh, than, than doing public service. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of my boy. I'm really proud of my, my little boy, boy, who's six foot five. Right, he's looks huge. Down at me, right, right. me on the forehead. You know, it's like, what, <laughs> what happened? I well, tell folks that's Minnesota bovine products. Got to give that kind of because I'm not that big. I'll tell you so, a quick. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll t- thanks for asking. Yeah, I'll tell you a quick story on the way out about the whole father is something. And, and he's a great kid, Jake, and, and you're a great kid. I love you both. But just to kind of emphasize your story, I had the opportunity to sit down with George Bush, senior, 41, uh, one summer. Imus was out at the ranch, and Bush came to meet us in our studios in Astoria, Queens. And uh, this is a true story. 41 goes to me. He goes, Sid, I got to tell you, Barbara, me, Laura, we love you. Barbara laughs at she. Lo- you're her favorite guy in the Imus show, blah, blah, blah. I go, I go George, I go, well, Mr. President, I go, you got an Stand. It's not easy. I mean, I miss makes fun of me every single day. My father and mother get upset. You know what he said to me? How do you think I feel? <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, a great man, a great man. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, one time he's doing an event for me uh, when I'm running for office and, and where he's got kind of backstage and Jake and Sarah and they're little kids, they're little kids. I don't know. Jake must have been, I don't know, 12 or 13. And 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 here he is, and what he's doing is is he's you know eating crackers, and and uh, he's oh can you get me another cracker, Jake? And just sitting, I was watching a grandpa. I said, here's the former president of the United States, right, great world leader, and he's sitting there like a great, it's a, 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 he could be anybody's grandpa, playing with my kids, mm. talking to my kids, and mm. I thought what a. You know, that's the kind of the personal side of folks. We yep. had to get caricatured as, as, you know, you're not strong, you're not this, you're not that. They're beating the heck out of you. Uh, but there's a personal side to yep. this that you get to see. And, and Bush had that, you know, yeah. 41 had that had that quality yeah. uh, and had that character. And, and uh, I'll just never forget that image of, of No, him that's just great. That's a great my story. Kids. Yeah. My time with him Absolutely. was spent talking about uh, t- Texas sports, Rangers, Astros, Longhorns. He loved, as you know, of course, him and his, uh, his son, they love those Texas sports. Hey, I love you. This was great today, as always. You're a wonderful guest. And good luck again to Jake. And uh, keep coming back, Norman. I love you. Thanks. So, always, always a pleasure. I said the very best to you. Take care, man. You Thanks. too. That's an excellent job. That is my first cousin. I'm proud to say it. My first cousin, Norm Coleman, out of the great state of Minnesota. We'll take a short break. We keep rolling on here. When we get back, my next guest loves Donald Trump. He loves politics, but he's also one of the greatest tight ends in the history of the game, one of the great coaches in the history of the game, and now a great analyst at ESPN. We talk politics and football with Coach Ditka. Right after this. It's guest on 640 Sports started talking. Matt Millen, Matt, how are you? Good, Sid. How have you been, my friend? Well, I've been angry, to be honest. It's been a bad week. What are we angry about? I had Ditka on a couple of days ago, and he was yelling and screaming about how the liberals are a bunch of wimps. People in this country are okay with our guys getting their heads cut off, and those same people are worried about how we treat terrorists. Don't waterboard them. Are you kidding me? Cut their freaking ears off. I wouldn't stop at the ears, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome in my house anytime you want. Sid Rosenberg. Mornings on 640 Sports. In Wisconsin, you're losing $2.2 billion. And when the people of Iowa found that out, I went to number one, and you went down the tubes. I anybody. promise if I wanted it, I would have got it. Jeff, for anybody on, Jeff, this, on this stage. I was a this, businessman. I got along with Clinton. I got along with everybody. Yeah. That was my job, to get along with people. But the I didn't want to. Is, excuse me. One second. No. I didn't want to. Jeff, Donald, you good. cannot take. More energy tonight. I like no. that. Wrong. Don't well, make things is, up, Jeff. Don't, don't make cut things. me off, Come sir. on. Don't make things Jake, up. I will get along, I think, with Putin. And we will have a much more stable, stable world. He just doesn't have courage. There's something missing from our president. It's yeah. a terrible statement. I think it's going to haunt him absolutely. I was watching, and he said the statement, and I said, wow, I can't believe it. I think she's got a beautiful face, and I think she's a beautiful woman. 
I hear your wife is a lovely woman. She is. I she's don't fantastic. Know her, and this she is, is total absolutely the love of my life, and she's right here. And why don't Good. you apologize Good. for her? No, I won't right do now. that because I said nothing yeah. wrong. I only say this: she can't run any of my companies. I am not sitting in the United States Senate with, by the way, the worst voting record there is today. Your you brother and your brother's administration gave us Barack Obama because it was such a disaster those last three months that Abraham Lincoln couldn't have been elected. Well, there's Donald Trump. Everybody knows I've um, uh, been a Trump guy all the way here. And I know Donald from New York. He hates me. That's fine. We haven't gotten along in seven years. But I, I, he's still been my guy. This, I thought he was awful last night. And I did find out this morning that uh, he it looks like he's the one lying about the whole casino thing here in Florida. Remember, he had that back and forth with Jeb Bush. He said, if I wanted a casino, I'd get one. Jeb's like, you tried. You couldn't get it. And I am uh, getting reports from a very good source this morning that it was Trump who lied last night, not Jeb Bush, about his uh, attempts to get casinos here in the state of Florida. With all that said, my next guest, I think, is also a Trump guy, although I'm not sure about that this morning. He's also uh, maybe the best tight end in the history of the NFL. Phenomenal coach with the Chicago Bears and now a great football analyst for ESPN. I always love bringing this guy on. I love him. It's the great Mike Ditka. Coach, good morning, pal. How are you? Well, you give them the whole load, don't you? You know, there's no way any of that's true. You know that. Which, which so, but part? Anyway, thank you. <laughs> about me. About me. No, I'm it's talking. all true. It's it's all true. You were, you, were, you were great at everything, and you're still great, and I love bringing you on because one thing about you, Coach, is um, which we need. This is why people like Donald Trump is you got a set of balls. You don't care. You're not going to sugarcoat stuff. You're not going to lie. You're going to tell it the way it is. That's why you, Mike Ditka, are a great American. Well, you know, you try to do the right things. You try to be, you know, you're not always going to say the right things. That's for sure. You know, we all put our foot in our mouth at different times in our life. But uh, if you have a core, uh, a moral code of values that are right, uh, you know, it's pretty easy to get along. And, you know, if you treat people the way that you want to be treated, things work out pretty good in life. It's when you start treating people other than the way you want to be treated that you have problems. So, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm at a point in my life now where I'm very, very happy, very content. As you should be. You're doing a great job on TV. You play some golf, and uh, your family is healthy. But I do want to ask you about uh, Trump before we get to football, Mike, because I know you, you've you liked him all along like I have. Uh, we need leadership. You, you know, you listen, I can't stand Obama. I think you're on the same page. Uh, but I didn't think Donald Trump was very good last night. In fact, I thought he was not very good in both debates. What are your thoughts this morning on Donald Trump? Yeah, running the country is not a debate. Right. True. So, you know, so you drop that right there. Now, you want a politician, you elect a politician. We've proven that. We elected a, a true nothing in the office with no leadership, I, I care, I care, and no, no leadership ability at all, the guy in office right now. And it, because he's a politician, he spoke good, he made a nice appearance. If that's what you want elected, listen, America will go on somehow. We'll survive these wackos. That's all there is to it. <laughs> but I'm just, I'm, I'm telling you very honestly that, that it, 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 Trump, what Trump says resonates with a lot of people because it's what they think. Now, does he always say it the right way? Hell no, he doesn't. But he says it. So, you know, these other people are sitting around not saying anything. I like a lot of the cat. I like Ben Cars. I like Harley Fearin. I like a lot of the people here. But I don't like some of the whiners. And, and most of the guys in politics are whiners for some reason. If they can't get it their way, they whine. You listen, you just made some great points, uh, and I like the same people that you like. I thought a couple of other guys did well last night, including uh, Chris Christie and Marco Rubio. And, and Marco Rubio, they're yes. all good people. Yes. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying you're talking about, you're talking about basically if you're a, a professional uh, politician or not. The ones I mentioned aren't even politicians, and they, they resonate more with yes. me because yes. I, I, I don't know. 
I mean, I yeah, I listen to everybody talk. I think I have a, 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 the ability to understand. They resonate with me because, they, you know, it's not about politics as usual, usual in Washington, D.C. Well, you make, I'll tell you why I made a great point, Mike, is because here I am telling yeah. you that I think Donald Trump did a lousy job last night. I really feel that way. Yet I woke up this morning, just like after the first debate, and his numbers were great. His poll numbers again this morning were great. So all that does is emphasize and prove your point that a debate doesn't mean he can't be a good leader. Yeah, debates are nothing, you know. I mean, I understand why we have. We want to learn more about the people who are running, and that's good. And I think we will learn more about them. There's no question about that. But uh, you know, it comes down to listen. You know, I, I I don't want to get into this. You know, you get what you deserve in life. Yeah. We got what we got what we deserved in life when we elected the guy we elected president. Period. Because that's what we did. So that that's it. So, you know, you live with that for eight years or four years or whatever it is. And then you, if you want to go out and make the same mistake with somebody else again, mm. then that's what you do. But that's the American people's fault. You know, a lot of the people really don't even tune in any of this stuff, don't understand anything about anything. Somebody comes up to them and says, hey, we want you to vote for this guy. Fine. Give you five bucks. You vote for that guy. <laughs> I mean, that basically. What the hell? I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah it's funny. I think you're right. Well, well look, because I, I want to move to football, too. But, you know, a lot of times, Mike, There's some of say. What's going on? Who cares? Uh, you know what it is. I love my Giants. I want to get to my Giants quickly. But, uh, you know, a lot of guys will come to you and go, hey, Mike, who's a better quarterback, Sonny Jurgensen or, uh, I don't know, uh, Brady? And you'll go, listen, for Brady, but uh, I don't want to compare eras. I don't want to compare. It's a different time. So some people will say that with the presidency, too. See, I'm going to say this. I'm going to be 49 years old in April, almost five decades on this earth. Uh, I thought Jimmy Carter was the worst president in my lifetime. Nice guy, nice guy, horrible president. In my opinion, my opinion, this guy now, despite Nobel Peace Prize, he's going to win the Peace Prize and all these deals he's making with it. I think this is the worst president in my lifetime. Do you think that's a very strong statement? No, I think it's a very true statement, but it's the, the, it's not so much president as it is leader. The, he's the worst leader. But and you're right. And and Jimmy Carter was a great great guy. You know, he just happened to be president and, and, and not a good time, and it didn't work out great for him. But uh, uh, you know what you, you, what you said is true. Do you think? I believe that. Do, do you think then? Last one on this. Yeah, Rand deal out there uh, making deals with enemies. I can't believe we're doing stuff like that. All these things that are going on right now. Do you think? Because you said earlier, America is going to survive no matter what. But with that said, do you think this really is a very pivotal time that we are in fact in some trouble here? Yeah, you know, we're in big trouble if we do the deal with Iran. There's no question about it. Iran is our enemy. It's not our friend. It's not our neighbor. It's not somebody who cares about America. It's somebody who wants death to America, who wants to destroy America. Because these people are not rational. They don't think like we think. They don't think like normal people think. Not that we're normal people all the time, but they don't think normally. So, you know, it, it, it's about creating uh, havoc and, and chaos and everything else. And, and, and there's no way that we should do anything with Iran. If we lift the sanctions, we are fools. But, you know, we may be fools. Who knows? Yeah, I think we are. Mike Ditka, the great Hall of Famer. Mike Ditka, ESPN, joining us uh, right here. Uh, let's get to some football, Mike. We, I love the six minutes of the political talk, but uh, football is here. We are one week in. Let's start with your Chicago Bears. They really did everything they had to to beat the Green Bay Packers last week, but two things went against them. Jay Cutler threw that pick that he always throws, and it's hard to beat Aaron Rodgers. What were your impressions with the Bears taking on Arizona this Sunday of Chicago? go last week well the bears uh, you know john's done a good job i mean he's a good coach and they're, they're better on defense guys it's evident they are a better football team on defense they do things better than they did a year ago the same thing oh you cannot make mistakes you cannot turn the ball over and if you do that that's going to hurt you they played i think i think green bay to go to the super bowl so i think they played them right to right to the end i mean they played them uh, you know uh, they could have won the game but they didn't win the game. Yeah. So I thought they did a pretty good job, really. So do now, I. Can they pick that up this week against the Cardinals? I don't know. But, I mean, I like what he's doing. I agree. I think they're actually going to win this weekend. Hey, Mike, uh, for a guy that's been around football a long time, so is Tom Coughlin. In fact, Tom Coughlin's probably going to the Hall of Fame, winning two Super Bowls in New York. Eli Manning may be going to the Hall of Fame, too, with two Super Bowl MVPs and about 40,000 passing yards. So with that said, how do the Giants make those errors at the end of the game they made with two guys who should know better? Well, 
I, I know, you know, in the heat of battle, sometimes a lot of things don't go the way you want them to. You're talking, you said it exactly right. Eli's a great quarterback, and sometimes uh, you, things don't go the way you want to. I mean, Tom Coughlin is going to be in the Hall of Fame. So, but, you know, I, it's only one game. Again, you know, I mean, if you're a Giants fan, it's one game. you got to look at the big picture. Uh, you know, they're in a division that uh, – yeah, we'll see. You know, no, no one's proven anything yet. You know, Dallas looks like they're better. Washington looks like they're going to struggle. Yeah. You know, they play a pretty good game Sunday, but you know, I, you know, it, so it, Philadelphia they got beat. So I mean, you know, everybody's sitting right there's the same damn spot almost. What's funny though is that Mike, we spent all this off season talking about whether Tom Brady's going to play Week One or Week Four or who knows what, and uh, sure enough, there he was in Week One against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and he was. Nearly perfect. No surprise. He's probably the best quarterback in the history of the game. But he just uh, went out there Thursday night, Mike Ditka, and business as usual, him, Gronkowski, nearly perfect. Well, you know, it's football as usual for Tom and the Patriots. You know, everybody harps on the Patriots. And I think a lot of the talk about the Patriots is more because of jealousy than anything else, Sid. I really yeah. They, they're a great organization with a great owner and a, one of the maybe as good a head coach as there's been in, in the last uh, – 50 years and uh and then you talk about the quarterback and you look around them you know they don't have a lot of key big name people Gronkowski's an outstanding football player uh but I mean you look around there's not a lot of big name guys but they play well together as a team they're a team they're not looking for big name guys they're looking for people to do their job and do it the right way and then they'll, they'll be okay and that's what they got the only really I mean, if you talk about big name guys outside of uh, Brady and Gronk, I mean, I can't think of a no, whole lot of them. No, you know? they There's don't. no Teddy Bruschi there anymore. You right. know? There's a lot of guys <laughs> that aren't there anymore. Yeah, Belichick won Super Bowls in the past, Mike, with guys yeah. you know you never heard of. But uh, you know, listen, that may be. Uh, uh, I'm interested in your opinion here. The most competitive division in football: the Dolphins beat the Redskins, the Jets beat the Browns. Rex Ryan had the Bills looking great against Indy. He's got the Pats this week. Pats won as well. All four teams inside the AFC East. Mike Ditka won Week One. That may be the most competitive division in football your thoughts there well for one reason they're all good teams yeah every one of them is a good football team yeah and don't 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 look down your nose at the bills or, or the dolphins because they're a good football team and the jets i think are going to be a lot better than people think because they're doing do they're going to do some basic things well we know the patriots are going to be there there's no question about that they're going to be there but those other three teams i think they said you know they've opened some eyes around the league and say hey this is really a good division. But I thought going in, I, I like Rex Ryan. A lot of people may not. I like him. I think he'll do a great, great job up in Buffalo. And, and he'll have those guys playing football and having fun. Now, can Tyrod Taylor do that every week? I don't know. But I, I, I like County Hill. I like what they're doing in Miami. Can they do it? Every, I don't know. But I tell you what, they'll be there every week, and yep. they'll be competing, and that's all you can ask. Could not agree more. Two more will let you run. Here's the good news if you're a Bronco fan. You just beat a really good Baltimore Raven team at home, and unfortunately they lost to Ralph Suggs for the year. Here's the bad news, Mike. Peyton Manning, uh, at the end of last year, was not the same, obviously, in the playoffs, not the same. The preseason, he was not the same. And he didn't really play well last week. They won the game, but he wasn't all that great. So moving forward, uh, are you concerned about Peyton Manning this year? Well, I, I'm not. No, I think you, you know Peyton Manning is going to go down one of the greatest ten quarterbacks that ever played the game. I don't know, maybe top five. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me about that. But I think when you look at the whole package with uh, what he brings to that team of leadership and character <clears throat> and quarterbacking ability, does he have the same arm he had ten years ago? No, no, he doesn't. But you know, he still has the same head and the same brain. And he thinks the same way. And he knows how to work a defense. He knows how to take advantage of your weakness. He knows how to look at film and see what you're doing, and he'll counter that. Now, now, does the ball go to the, probably uh, with the same velocity to the outside? I don't know. I, I, I can't tell that. But uh, I, I like Peyton Manning. Uh, and, 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 you know, the, the, they understand. They're going to look at the film and say, oh, here, here's where we're at. And yeah. We could have been better here. We could have been better there. And, and they'll try to get better. The, the Dolphins are a good football team. I mean, not Dolphins. The Broncos are a good football yeah. team. Yeah. You know, listen, you know uh, as well as anybody, Mike, you're playing days in Chicago and in Dallas and coaching the Bears. Very difficult to repeat, uh, let alone get back to consecutive Super Bowls, but certainly win them both. Seattle has done that. Maybe they should have won them both. Hand the ball to Marshawn Lynch. They've won two in a row. Uh, but there is some concern about that team this year. They're beat up on defense, and Russell Wilson got the money. And sure enough, week one, they lost to St. Louis. Do you think some of the bloom is off the rose in Seattle? Well, let me tell you something, first of all. Don't look down your nose at St. Louis. 
They're good, right? They're good. Now they can play yeah. football. Yeah. And I'll tell you another one. Tennessee can play football. So you look at those two. Okay, go back to the Seattle team. You know how you beat a bully? You punch you him in the, the base? You the bully in the nose harder right. than he hits you. Right. <laughs> and that's what people are starting to understand. If you're going to play a bully, you've got to play a bully on the bully's terms. You got to be able to be match match their physicality and stop their running game. And you know, and if you can do those things, you got a chance. Doesn't mean you're going to win. I still think Russell Wilson is an outstanding quarterback. But everybody comes becomes pretty normal if you put a lot of pressure on them. And I think you're seeing that right now. So you know, you you got to match force with force. And in the case of Seattle, they're the bully, so you got to hit them as hard as they hit you. Last one, Monday Night Countdown. You guys have the Jets and the Colts, Mike, coming up on Monday. You said you think the Jets will be better than people think. I, I don't disagree, but I cannot see the Colts starting the season at 0-2. They lost last week to Buffalo. This time it's Andrew Luck at home. T.Y. Hilton may play. I think Jet fans are uh, starting to get giddy about this game. Uh, I would tell Jet fans, like Lee Corso says, uh, you know, not so fast. Your thoughts on Jets and Colts, a game you're going to have on Monday night. Well, maybe not so fast, but uh, the Jets are going to be okay going in there. First of all, they're going to go in there with a lot of confidence. And right now, looking at Indy, I was really surprised. I I, I didn't think they looked very uh, – well, um, say they looked good, I mean, would be lying because they didn't look good. But I thought a lot of it was, it was the pass protection. A lot of pass – the problems in the pass protection, it caused Luck to have some problems getting rid of the ball and then getting hit. And, uh, you know, he made some mistakes. And, 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 and Andrew Luck is a great football player. But I don't care who you are, quarterback. If you don't have time to execute, you're going to have problems. And, and that's what it looked like to me. So they've got to, they've got to fix something this week if, if, if they're going to move on because they could end up 0-2 very easily. Wow. Okay, so in closing here, Mike, just to kind of recap where we started this whole thing, Mike Ditka, the great Hall of Famer, the great Mike Ditka, still a Donald Trump guy. I'm, I'm, and listen, I'm for the best guy for the job. And I, the reason I like Donald Trump, and I'll say it a hundred times, he resonates with me. He's not a politician. He made a lot of money. He understands what it means to be successful, how to grow an economy, how to do those things. I think that's important. A lot of people may not. But all, everybody's going to spin words at you. know. I heard all these debates and this and that. You listen to all the po- – but they're all politicians. Now, uh, Farina is not. She's not. And, and she was great. Ben Carson was great, I thought. You don't need another politician because if you go to Washington with that mentality, that's all you're going to be. You're going to be nothing. And, and that's what we have there, nothing right now. I want to see you. Forget about Sunday mornings on ESPN, Mike. I want to see you on Meet the Press. I swear to God. Just let me call Chuck Todd right now and set that damn thing up. You're so good and uh, so patriotic. I want you on Meet the Press on Sunday instead of like uh, count whatever. Well, they're probably they're probably a little too liberal. For me. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> then go on Fox with my good buddy, Sean Hannity. Either way, Mike, I love you. You were great today. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Great to have you. God, I love him. He is great every – it gets better and better. I know. He's – every time – and he's his football man. analysis is terrific, but he comes on and he's uh, – that's a great American right there. Chris West, you taking notes from Mike Ditka? You taking notes? Uh, you have to take notes when Mike Ditka speaks up. I don't care who you are. Yeah, but it's you, you, Ditka. Th- this is only the third time you've worked on this program. You've never heard Mike Ditka speak uh, on politics. How impressive is that? That is very impressive. He got I, you going, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. Yes. He was your, basically your Cialis. I wouldn't refer to it like that, <laughs> but okay. All right. Kind of weird turn of events, right. you know, to, right. to equate, you know, politics and, you know, penis pills. But right. All right. Let's all right. go for it. All righty. Well, uh, we'll take a short break. Uh- 